Okay, so Amazon S3 compatible storage and Kubernetes. Uh, I wanted to follow up from Lewis's talk because I think that uh, the Minio story plays right into it very well. And from an application perspective, I think that you probably want to use APIs to talk to your storage. And one of the storages you could talk to would be Amazon S3. And uh, so now you can use that uh, for your objects and put your objects in there. Little small things, maybe those would go into databases and wouldn't be ideal candidates for object storage, but for uh, images and large files and stuff, those are, those are ideal for it. Now, if you were to uh, wanted to scale uh, your <coughs> microservice architecture, right? You want to you, you want to scale using that, leveraging that. Then this is where Lewis's talk comes in handy because now you can use containers to hold your storage and scale it out. Now, uh, one of the pieces I put in here uh, that you can see is Minio. Now, Minio is uh, an S3 Amazon S3 compatible storage server. So that means that you talk to it as if it's AWS S3. Now, it doesn't matter if it's sitting running in Azure or, or Google Cloud um, or, or Alibaba or sitting in your private uh, on-prem infrastructure. So this now gives us a lot of flexibility to not have to rewrite our apps so that they can now talk to uh, <coughs> storage in a common lingo. And uh, so this talk is about, hey, I think that lingo should be S3, and here's why. So on this particular one, I may come back to it, but down in that data volume level, you may want to present one of those volumes as a persistent storage so that when the container is disconnected and brought up somewhere else, that it will get that same claim, that same storage. So something like a Portworks can provide you all of that, but then the consumer of it, well, why not abstract that so that's something that provides your storage that's accessible over APIs? So Minio usage. Uh, We've got over 90 million Docker pulls. Uh, yes, I get the Docker pulls, uh, maybe a lot of CI, CD, a lot of churn and stuff, but considering that number was 60 million in March, uh, that's not too bad. Uh, we've got over 275 contributors. Uh, we are open source. Um, we've got a, a very active Slack channel. Feel free to join it, jump in with any questions you may have. Uh, developer traction, this is a uh, number of stars in GitHub. So, we're at 11.7K uh, uh, stars right now. And just to put that in perspective, uh, Docker's up at about 50,000. Uh, Kubernetes is up around 37,000. So we're uh, gaining a lot of traction. So those two that you see for stars are Swift and Ceph. So this is just to show you that there is a lot of traction here and things are moving in this direction. And I think that it's a, a very positive direction. So the Minio stack itself, there's kind of three pieces to it. You, you don't need all three. You can pick and choose anyone you want. You've got a server, you've got client, and you've got Minio SDK. Uh, the server itself, I'll explain on, a, on the next slide. The client is one that is an S3 client that you can talk to any S3. So you can talk to Amazon S3 with it. It's a very slick little interface. You can use it to, uh, it's just a short MC command. You can use it to list buckets, list objects, uh, do some mirroring, and do some very cool things like that. And your Minio SDK would be uh, an, S, an Amazon compatible S3 SDK. Now Amazon's has gotten very bloated and uh, has a lot more than just the S3 stuff. So it's very, very lightweight, very, very well documented and easy to put into your applications. So uh, the, the server itself has four flavors. So the first one is the very simple Minio server and then a directory. And now, poof, you've got an S3 server, you can hit that IP as an endpoint with your access key, your secret key, and away you go. Now, that is going to be prone to uh, data loss, data corruption, et cetera, if that slash dir mount is not durable and protected with some kind of resiliency. So if you're putting it onto a file system that already has rating or erasure coding, whatever, fine, good to go. Now, let's say that you're not, and you're putting it onto disks inside a server. So Excel mode would be single server. We've got a bunch of disks inside it. So say 16 disks inside of it, we're gonna set up erasure coding across all of that so we have data and parity blocks to protect your stuff so you can lose a disk and it's not a big deal. Now we go next level, which would be distributed. So we can go, this has actually been updated, it's up to 32 servers, but on the Kubernetes portion, it's up to 16. Uh, and now we can go all those different hosts uh, and their mount points, and, and we can have lots of disks in the hosts and we, we can now run everything big and distributed. And I got a slider after this. And gateway mode. Gateway mode now translate your S3 calls into blob storage on Azure, into a GCS for GCP, so if you're a Google Cloud Platform, 
um, S3 if you want to pass right through to Amazon. And there are uh, NAS as well, so if you've got a bunch of NetApp or, or any other storage kicking around. And we can go on from there. So the architecture is it's uh, fully distributed. Uh, we have been building it, uh, and, and the hardware that we're using, we can saturate 100 gig. That is not an easy feat by any chance. And we're trying to build a high performance uh, S3. And it's traditionally been deep and cheap, but we want it to go above and beyond. Permission to go past my five minutes, yay or nay? I, all right, I, I think I got quorum here. Uh, can I have two? All right. <laughs> okay, so you ask for any node in the cluster and you will get your data back. Now we got distributed, uh, sorry, federated. Now you ask any node in any cluster and using the services in DNS and uh, in etcd, we can now get our bucket from wherever. So this is the way that Amazon does it, so that you just hit the region and magically the resource is found and delivered to your application. You want to deploy it on Kubernetes. We've got a uh, Minio Helm chart that you can use, nice and easy there. Um, you can also go to our website and you can hit the uh, Minio.io. Right on the main page, you'll see a Kubernetes. It can generate the YAML for you right there. Uh, make it nice and easy to get started. I'll skip the philosophy because I'm on borrowed time. And uh, so the other way to get started is just play.minio.io. This is an S3 uh, storage server that's accessible to you in the public. So go to that site, it will give you an access key, secret key. Go ahead, play at the file browser, hit it with your APIs, use it to test the SDK that you've just downloaded, and, uh, and this is a, a great way to get started. So with that, I wanna thank you very much, and uh, this was my first mini presentation to a crowd, so please bear with me and thank you. <laughs> Excellent, nice work. Okay, and uh, uh, I did also hear that there's an operator for many of it. So when people can download, I don't know where, but I think uh, that's something else that they have to choose from. Lots, lots to choose. From. Awesome. So thank you very much. Good job. Okay. Um, all right. So let's see. We're going to switch back onto the track that we had, and I believe that means we now have this time. Oh, did you have a question? Yeah, question for uh, video. Um, yeah, maybe here. Oh, good question. Does it work with CSI or? CSI, is that the CSI? It's a URL for the network. CSI Yeah, so, so um, it, it just sees, sorry, the question was, does it work with the CSI? It, Minio just sees a mount point. It does not do the actual file system. So that mount point could be local, could be a binary running on Linux, could be a container with a persistent volume given to it. That's what it sees, the other part's the job of whatever that is. We take care of the erasure coding, the distribution and stuff to keep that online and available for everything. So, uh, oh, what's like, yeah. my question? Okay. I mean, yeah, what's the primary sort of use case? Primary use case. So primary use case for a S3 as a cheap and deep might be to back data up to, it might be to, uh, uh, there's a lot of like legacy storage and stuff that hey you can you can upload it to the cloud and keep it that way. Uh, photos, uh, videos, and stuff. Uh, so I mean, I, see, I use S3. Yeah. And so I, I, oh, so so. I live on the Amazon cloud. Yeah. So so the use case for this is that uh, you could use it in Amazon if you wanted. We have a, a lot of people doing it, but you don't need to because you have your Amazon S3 sitting there. However, if you want it to be on your laptop and have S3, now you do. If you want to be in your private infrastructure, now you do. In another cloud, no problem. All of the stuff you wrote that works with S3 magically works now when you point it to a Minio endpoint. Now, would you run Minio in AWS? Yes, you might. Why? You don't want to tamper with your bucket. Maybe you don't have permissions to the organization's S3 to do certain things. So now you can just spin up a test in there, deploy it because you've got compute, and off you go and you're testing against it. Yeah, so I can certainly imagine like the kind of local test environment. We, we've done this. Before. Yeah. We just ran some S3 emulator. I don't think it was any of us. So, so another uh, use case here would be the Internet of Things. So let's say that you've got a bunch of autonomous stuff that may or may not have connection to Amazon all the time. You've got drones going out, taking footage of stuff, writing it somewhere. The apps in it can be writing some menu. 
when it gets into internet range, it can be sending those back. So uh, your app doesn't have to be written. It can try something. It could be used as a cache mode. So you, you could, you could uh, now have high performance storage to the app, even though the back end storage may be further away. So you can get those writes out of the app right away. There's a, there's a lot of flexibility. I'm happy to talk after. Yes, so another thing too is that since S3 is a service from Amazon, uh, they have access to your data that you put there. Now you may have your own keys and stuff, but they are managing that. Now if you are running this, uh, you can put this inside of something that is encrypted separately on your own and then manage your keys and manage your own services this way. Oh, uh, just, yeah, here. Uh, hi, I want to ask uh, for a uh, use case uh, regarding uh, using mail or um, uploading the data to S3. So uh, the use case is like um, we're processing a lot of data and then we're saving stage files uh, from Spark to uh, S3. So, you know, that network can take a long time. So I want to just uh, maybe to get an idea of like saving it to video compared to upload to S3. Which one is faster? Uh, well, if which one is faster? If you're local to uh, if you're local to S3, because your uh, containers and stuff are running in it, that's that's going to be nice and fast. If you are in your private infrastructure uh, and you're running 100 gig E or something, this is a, a good use case here that you're very local to it, very fast. Um, there's yeah, the, the access to it could be very quick. Uh, also, we support Lambda functions too. So sometimes you can bring your functions to the data instead of bringing your data to the functions. Uh, does Minio function like HDFS? Yes, in the sense that HDFS is leveraging some uh, razor coding and uh, leverages distribution and you can hit it that way. So kind of yes, but it really, you talk to it S3. Like it is, it, it sits there and, and it takes all your S3 calls uh, and uh, if, yeah, it's, you just, you just talk to it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, happy to tell you. Thanks, everyone. Sorry, great. Did you have one more question, even? There's another question. Oh, my gosh. Sorry. Right. One last question. Yeah. So just go back to your scenario. Um, if I have IoT, which I, I have my program, programmer like you, the buffering, so with uh, Minio, do I have to still having my own design of buffering whenever you get back to your online and you pass the data on there, or Minio has certain engine, engine or infrastructure? We, we don't have a uh, built-in cache mode that would send it back automatically in that example, and we don't because we don't know the priority of your objects, which ones should be prioritized, in what timing, what if you temporarily see the internet and then you don't again. So I think that you'd control that on the app side. You'd use uh, the Minio client tools, MC, and you can use mirroring there and mirror the buckets. Uh, so there, there's options there. The uh, Minio code itself runs as a container or a binary in Mac, Linux, Windows, you name it. And uh, so that can run, it's small. We've got people running it in Raspberry Pi just, just to tinker around with it. So if you have something very small, lightweight, Internet of Things type of thing, this is a great place that that app is written to talk S3 APIs. And, uh, and then if you're not happy with Minio, you put it on somebody else, you put it on Amazon. I think that it's super flexible and you don't have to rewrite things. Okay, great. Thank you again. Thank Thanks. you very much. <laughs> Thank you.